Hello everyone, I am Sammy, your devoted manga otaku, and welcome to my manga space. Today I will be giving a spoiler-free review for the completed manga series Backstage Prince, written by Kanako Sakura Koji. This is a teen-rated shoujo romance manga, and it debuted in March 2007. This manga is published by Viz Media, and it was published after being serialized in the Shoujo Beat magazine. Before we jump into things, I invite you to grab a coffee or other beverage of your choice, and let's talk manga. Alrighty, the story of Backstage Prince begins with the introduction of Akari. She is your average, ordinary high school girl who fails to see why her friends are so enthralled with the talented and handsome Prince of Kabuki, Ryusei Horiuchi. After feeling extremely guilty from accidentally injuring him, Akari volunteers to help Ryusei as his assistant in the Kabuki theater until he is healed. The antisocial and reclusive Ryusei accepts only because his cat, Mr. Ken, seems to approve of Akari. The two grow close while working together and eventually realize they have fallen for each other. However, this couple's relationship is not all rainbows and smiles. It's put through multiple tests, including the busyness of Ryusei's profession as a rising star in Kabuki, his popularity with the ladies, a disapproving father, and another kabuki actor who has a thing for Akari. I have owned this manga forever. I actually read some of the chapters when it was issued in Shoujo Beat years and years ago. And I remember really loving this manga as a teenager, which makes sense because this manga is geared towards that demographic. However, now that I have reread it as an adult, I can't help but have mixed feelings. Clocking in at two volumes, so there's only two volumes in the series, I knew to expect the pacing of this manga to be off. And my assumptions were accurate. The story does feel rushed. The main characters meet and start a relationship all within the first chapter of the story. It's very insta-love, and I was reaching to find why they even fell for each other in the first place. Now, insta-love can be done in such a way that their relationship still feels genuine. Sweat and Soap is a prime example of this in my opinion. Both characters in that series start a relationship in the first chapter as well, but it felt real, whereas this form of insta-love felt forced. Also, Ryusei's love confession was very cringe to me, but I noticed that the manga suffered from multiple awkward translation issues, so that might be why it was so weird. <laughs> the drama and conflict in these volumes was very predictable and overall unoriginal. The problems were always stemming from Akari's lack of confidence. She was either constantly belittling herself and often wondering if she was too plain and undeserving to date a famous kabuki actor, or there was some miscommunication and Akari automatically thinks that Ryusei finds her to be a nuisance. These insecurities are things real people feel and can exist in relationships. But Akari never bothers to talk to Ryusei about these issues or how she's feeling and instead opts to crying and running away every single time. <laughs> it got old and it got annoying, especially since most of these problems could have been mended with one conversation. I kept trying to be mindful of this manga's intended audience, which is preteen to young teenagers, and that actually helped me understand Akari a bit better, but the crises were so juvenile to me, it was hard to take them seriously. Also, I disliked the love triangle introduced in these books, 
It was so pointless. If it would have been left out, there might have been more pages to focus on fleshing out the narrative. I think the main issue of this series was that it tried to do too much, and I felt like cliches were added without them making much sense. I would have rather had the couple go through a bigger hurdle that had some depth and weight to it than have these little meaningless conflicts riddled throughout the story. Overall, I didn't find the plot added anything original or substantial to the genre. At moments, it felt like I had read this story a million times before. It's strange because Sakura Koji Sensei talks about their love for Kabuki and explains more about the theater in between chapters and in the afterward, but I felt like that element of the story fell short. And it's a shame because if there were more Kabuki in the story, it would have made the story stand apart from the typical shoujo. For example, Ryusei is a kabuki actor, but you see very little of what he does. And maybe that's the point. I mean, it is called Backstage Prince. <laughs> so it should be assumed that readers would be seeing more of behind the scenes. But even that part of the story was unclear. I still have no idea what Akari did as a kabuki assistant. After saying all this, I do want to mention a quote that Sakura Koji Sensei wrote in the afterword of the second volume. There were a lot of things I wanted to draw, yet couldn't do so well. It served as a fresh reminder that I still have a lot to learn, but it was nice to know that I was able to get through yet another volume. It became a very memorable piece for me. This quote made me appreciate the manga in a very strange way because it's almost like Sakura Koji Sensei was using this series to better their illustrations and skills writing manga. And if you didn't know, after publishing Backstage Prince, Sakura Koji Sensei went on to write and illustrate one of my favorite manga series ever, Blackbird. I am so dumb. <laughs> I didn't even realize that both manga were written by the same mangaka until I read Backstage Prince for this review. I uh, pulled one of the volumes of Blackbird just to show you guys. Look at how similar the main characters are. So like the only difference that I can really see is the eye color. But uh, I think I know where... Um, <laughs> Sakura Koji Sensei got her inspiration for the characters in Blackbird. <laughs> Speaking of characters, let's draw our attention away from the story and look at the leads and supporting characters. Unfortunately, our main couple's personalities and development suffered, and I assume it's because of the length of this series. I wouldn't say they were completely one-dimensional, but they often felt like they lacked depth and details that should make them stand out of the leads. I don't even think Akari gets a backstory. Ryusei does get a small blurb in the first volume, and I thought it was really fitting for his character. Still, I wish it was expanded on even more. Ryusei was a big ol' grump, which I'm okay with. <laughs> I'm actually quite fond of grouchy manga boys. <laughs> Sometimes it felt like he was overly controlling and possessive of Akari, but Akari found it endearing and lovable versus smothering. And I get it, only she was allowed to see the real Ryusei, who, by the way, is surprisingly emotional when he is vulnerable. The cranky boys are always big, soft marshmallows on the inside. I couldn't help but relate to Ryusei's antisocial personality and constant desire to alienate himself from people. I did love how devoted Ryusei was to Akari and their relationship was sweet. But personally, I prefer manga with a little more teasing slash smuttiness. <laughs> Akari was cute enough 
but I found her to be kind of boring. Also, the supportive characters had weak personalities too and usually lacked a motive. I felt like they were aiding or sabotaging the main characters to move the story along versus actually having a reason to do so. I'll say it again. <laughs> if this manga had been a four volume series, I feel like it would have made the world a difference. I don't really have a whole bunch to say about the art. I like it. It's nice. <laughs> the art didn't wow me in any way, but I appreciate that it's drawn well and it's expressive. In conclusion, this is a small, quick series that I feel would be perfect for 12 and 13 year old girls and boys or people who are just getting into manga and don't want to commit to a long series. I'm not sure I would recommend buying this though. If possible, I would try and find it at your local library or wait till it's on sale. As for star rating, I'm giving Backstage Prince two stars. And that, friends, is the end of this review. As always, I encourage and welcome constructive criticism so that I can write better reviews in the future. Please let me know what you think. Also, have you read Backstage Prince? I would love to hear what you thought in the comment section below. If you're interested in watching more videos from me, you can check out my end card where I'll have links to my most recent videos. I hope you all have a magnificent day, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye! Not going to lie, this manga makes me want to reread Blackbird, which is like 18 volumes long. <sighs> so many manga, so little time.